also new questions tonight about the behavior of our commander in chief as this terror attack went down. Tonight, for the very first time, our own Brett Baer got an answer to where the president was that evening, or more specifically, where he was not. Brett joins us now. Brett, what an extraordinary interview you had with Tommy Veter tonight on your show. Explain who Tommy is, um, and then I want to I want to show the, the audience the, the soundbite he gave you on where the president was that night. Sure. Tommy Vitor was the spokesman for the National Security Council. He was in the White House uh, the night of 9-11. He was in the White House Situation Room the night of 9-11, and he was integral to all of this as it was happening. He's also one of the people who briefed Susan Rice before that Sunday right. talk show scenario. And when you, scenario. When you say 9-11, you mean 9-11 of 2012, which was the night I'm of the sorry, ben yeah. Benghazi terror attack. Let's listen now to the exchange you had with him on, on where the president was. I was in the Situation Room that night, okay, and we didn't know uh, where the ambassador was definitively. In was fact, the there president was a, in the Situation Room? No, and the, the fact that your network at one time reported that he watched video feed of the of the attack as it was ongoing is part of what I think has been okay. well, a, let me, let a me get pattern to the of then. inaccurate Where was the president? in the White House. Let me finish my initial statement. Okay, the, the notion that we could, um, you know, divine motives from a drone feed I think is wrong. Um, and I also think that this idea that the military had the capability to rescue those individuals but chose not to I think is extremely unfair, unfair to the military, and Admiral Mullen said basically the opposite. In the ARB report. Yeah. Uh, where was the president? In the White House. He wasn't in the Situation Room. Uh, at what point in the evening? I mean, he was constantly... Any point in the evening. You know, it's well known that when the attack uh, was first briefed to him, it was in the Oval Office, and he was updated constantly. And, and during that briefing, he told Tom Donilon and his Joint Chiefs uh, and his sec def to begin moving all military assets into the region. So then when Hillary Clinton talks to him by phone at 10 p.m., he's where? I, I don't know. I don't have a tracking device on him in the residence. Why is that important, Brett? Why is it important is because you have a lot of stuff happening. This is in the middle of the attack. We don't know where the U.S. ambassador is for a long time there. And then they eventually find out that he's dead. Now, the White House Situation Room, I've been in there. Um, it's not a big place. If Tommy Vitor is in there all night and he says the president wasn't there, he's not in a different place, uh, you would know when the president was there. Can the president handle crises from other parts of the White House? Of course. But when stuff breaks, most times officials go to the place where there's the communication equipment, all the intelligence coming in in the Situation Room. This case, mm -hmm. the president was not there. You also pressed him on who changed the talking points among the many other, because the CIA produced talking points, they got changed, and the, what we were fed on the Sunday shows and thereafter looked very different. And you pressed him on who, for example, changed the word attack. We were attacked to, there were demonstrations. I want the audience to see that exchange. According to the emails and the timeline, sure. the CIA circulates new talking points after they've removed a mention of Al-Qaeda. Yeah. And then at 621, the White House, you, Me. add a line about the administration warning of September 10th of social media reports calling for demonstrations. True? Uh, I believe so. Did you also change attacks to demonstrations in the talking points? Uh, maybe. I don't really remember. You don't remember? Dude, this was like two years ago. We're still talking about the Dude, most mundane it is the thing process that everybody is talking about. Explain the significance of that, Brett. The White House says now that, as you rightly pointed out, that the Ben Rhodes email is separate, and they're talking about the Middle East protests. They say that Susan Rice relied exclusively on the CIA talking points uh, for talking about Benghazi. And Jay Carney repeatedly said that the White House and State Department had nothing to do with changing the CIA talking points. They point to Mike Morrell. Here's the problem. In that interview right there, you hear Tommy Vitor, who's in the White House, admitting that he did change the talking points, adding that warning, and not telling us whether he changed from attacks to demonstrations. It's just a key thing for those points. I'll just also want to say one more thing, Megan. There are more documents coming. Uh, there's documents from the Defense Intelligence Agency in the first hours that identify this as a terrorist attack. There are yeah. State Department documents. They knew this isn't the what end. was going to happen. Brett, thank you so much. Great interview. Sure. And don't don't miss Brett's special Fox News.